Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. When I shortly mentioned my topic yesterday to a couple of people, they both warned me. Yes, thank you. <laughs> um, they both warned me that I might be preaching to a converted public today. And, well, that would really be a bummer because I really wanted to be controversial today. And, well, if you're not convinced already about this, that's a good thing. I hope I will convince you. And if you're already convinced about this, then I hope that you will take action about it because it, something needs to happen. Now, I'd like to make a plea today for the importance of um, introducing a fair use or an open norm in the European corporate system. I think we had wonderful presentations the past two uh, afternoons and evenings about about the fact that copyright, or at least creation, creation is a conversation. A conversation between the author and his public. And you need to keep that conversation alive. And we've had wonderful presentations, you know, telling us how the landscape of creation has changed through technology, how many more people are getting engaged in the conversation how people are borrowing from each other and building upon it, and, and even the most banal uh, uh, brandishing of a, a, a cat on a video is also important when put into context and can participate in, in the conversation. We also know that, of course, use, reuse, the, the whole practice has changed, and the author, is no longer solely an author, but he's also a user and vice versa. So we all know that. So we don't want to discourage this. We don't want to discourage this with an outdated copyright regime. Um, some uh, attempts are being made, or at least in the discussion about this conversation about creation. People are uh, arguing, well, you know, you can license. You can license, well, no. Uh, whenever you have a spur of, of inspiration and you see something out there on the internet that you want to use and reuse and mash up and remix and put into a, a whole new jacket, you don't want to have to ask permission for something that you know, that you know will improve society because it's, it's your creation, it's your inspiration. Now, and even, even all the material that's licensed under a Creative Commons license, it's very useful. But it's just an infinite portion of all the material out there. So that's not enough to grant you the, the certainty that what you're doing with the material is allowed. Other people, and that's where controversy may arise, I think, uh, lawmakers in Europe currently, and also fellow scholars, uh, one of them is my colleague, Bernd Gunholz, they've been arguing that maybe you can go around the problem, the problem set by copyright law and by, by the strict interpretation of the rights by just doing a, a broader interpretation of the existing limitations. So they suggest interpreting um, the right to quote more broadly, the right to parody more broadly. Well, I submit to you that this is not enough. It's not enough because it doesn't take account of put, you know, uh, displaying thumbnails on, um, on a search engine result page. It doesn't take account of text and data mining. It doesn't take account of all the remixes that you're doing when you're uh, mashing up a, a photograph and putting it up on the internet. So quotation, the existing limitations, even if amplified, will not resolve the problem, and especially, it's not forward-looking. It's really staying put in the straitjacket of the copyright system, and there's no fresh air in it. Um, well, what's the danger of not addressing the problem? Well, I submit to you that there, there will be a chilling effect, and we, we might feel it also to some extent when creators don't know if they're allowed or not to use the material that inspires them well they might decide not to use it at all and that will be a pity um, it does create barriers 
uh, to socially and economically relevant uses. And the fact is, and this is also part of the research I've been doing, you notice that judges, because they're constrained as this straitjacket of copyright law, they seek other solutions in other areas of the law. And uh, they invoke other norms of the law, and they start interpreting the norms that they have at their disposal using other tools than the tools offered by copyright law to solve the problems before them. So this also does not create legal certainty and it does not um, promote uh, harmonization across the European Union. This is something that should also be addressed because in the end it creates uh, legal uncertainty for everyone. So. Well, we should introduce a fair use in Europe. I call it fair use here to provoke you. I know fair use is an American concept. I, I wasn't born yesterday. And um, I know it doesn't exist in Europe. And I really don't really mind if we call it fair use or if we call it anything else as long as it's an open norm, an open norm that has clear criteria of evaluation and assessment. So let's give the judges the tools to render judgments in certain circumstances where they will be allowed to evaluate the, the, and, and weigh the interests before them. This is what we need. We need a safety net next to the limitations that we have currently in the Copyright Act, the safety net to allow judges to render judgment. Um, so, in my opinion, yours truly, I think that if we had a common open norm for the whole of European Union, it would contribute to harmonization of the criteria for evaluation in cases that are not listed in the list of exceptions that exist. It would provide, as I say, the tools for judges to render judgment. It would also insufflate a breathing space in the copyright system to allow people to mix and rematch and transform and create and participate in this conversation. It would, well, this is, this is probably the most controversial of all because rights owners are very afraid of a fair use defense. They're, they're convinced that introducing a fair use defense will open the door to infringement and will, will uh, also open the door to leakage in their remuneration, that they won't get paid anymore. But this is not the case. I mean, this is not the experience in, uh, in America. It's not the experience in Canada. It's not the experience in all the countries that recognize either fair use or another type of open norm. There's, you can't say, I think, that Canadian creators are poorer or uh, in a lesser situation than creators in Europe because Canada's Supreme Court has recognized a, a broader interpretation of fair dealing that's, that's closer to fair use. No, if Europe wants to compete with the rest of the world, we need to participate fully with the two feet and our pens and our computers in this conversation and having a breath of fresh air will um, contribute to this. And I would say, let's not keep fixing, fixing the problem with a small band-aid. So I have one minute left and this is my message. So basically, the, we're now in the process of a copyright reform at the European level. There has been in the report of the responses to the consultation, well, a wind, and there was a specific question about fair use. And of course, part, part of the respondents uh, answered positively to the need of a fair use. We still need to convince the other part. So help me and let's convince everyone that the conversation needs some fresh air and some space to take place. Thank you.